Hey there. Just wanted to preface this video by saying sorry for the extremely long wait time between this video and the last. I have been a little busy working with this guy right here, which you might know, on a video, and also English assignments are really coming down on me as of late. Also, you may notice that I sound a tiny bit different. I did some more tweaking to my mic to make it sound a little bit better, with a little bit less bass as well. So again, I apologize, and I hope to get something out soon that isn't a starter guide video. But anyways, enjoy this video. What is going on people? Welcome back to my Vault Hunters 1.18 starter guide. Today, you may notice that we are not in the traditional Vault Hunter setting, and instead, we are on a floating island in the middle of nowhere. And that is because today's video is all about Sky Vaults, specifically how they work and how to get started. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin. So, to begin, you first need to create a Sky Vaults world. This can be accomplished by going to the Moral World options after hitting Create New World and then click once on World Type and you'll have selected Sky Vaults. One thing I will say, because Sky Vaults can be sometimes janky or super unforgiving due to the fact that you are living in the void with no resources, you may want to turn on cheats just in case you get soft locked. Anyways, all you need to do now is just create the world to begin your Sky Vaults journey. When you spawn in, you'll be met with your typical floating island, but you'll also see a vault portal and this weird white amethyst looking thing. This is a budding crystal, and this is how you'll be getting your basic materials in Sky Vaults. Breaking the crystal clusters off the budding crystal will give you a vault crystal. This vault crystal isn't like your typical vault crystal though, it's what's known as a raw vault crystal. Now, what the hell is a raw vault? Well, they look a little something like this. Yeah, no, nothing really has changed visual-wise, but the properties are just a little bit different. So you still have a vault objective that you can do for a completion crate at the end of the vault, but if we take a look at what's inside this wooden chest, it doesn't quite look like your typical wooden chest. Like I said before, raw vaults are just a little bit different. Instead of giving you normal loot, you will get different types of vanilla materials. Wooden chests are your basic chests, yielding basic stuff like torches, dirt, and all the stone variants. Living chests focus on stuff like food, healing, and mob drops. Ornate chests focus on gear and crafting materials. And gilded chests focus on ore materials and enchantment books. Vault altars are the exact same, you can still get your blessings and vault favors from them in a raw vault. A small change though is that all ore POIs are replaced with normal stone and vanilla ores instead of vault stone and vault gems. Now, raw vaults are not limited to just common rooms, there are also other rooms that contain other stuff. First up, we have the chromatic iron room. This room is exactly like it is in the normal vaults, however now it has two variations. One will contain chromatic iron, and the other will contain ores from other mods such as Mechanism, Thermal Series, and Create. Next up, we have the Mining Quarry. As the name implies, this is where you will find all of your ores like iron, gold, coal, diamonds, ancient debris, etc. You'll also have a chance to find compressed blocks of various materials in these little carts here, which are super helpful in Sky Vaults. On top of this, there's a chance that sections of the mineshaft can have a theme. For example, sometimes it may be a lush cave theme, giving you access to glowberries and spore blossoms. Or sometimes it could be an amethyst theme, giving you access to, well, amethyst. The mineshaft is also loaded with vault stone, which makes it easy to get shipped vault rocks. For our next room, we have the nether room. Now, be aware that this is a room that you will not find until after level 20, which is in line with the Vault Altar that starts asking for nether materials once you reach level 20 and beyond. The nether room, as it implies, is where you'll find all of the nether materials you need for the Vault Altar. It has three variations, which are the Soul Sand Valley, the Warped Forest, and the Crimson Forest. Next up, we have the End Room. Similarly to another room, there is a level requirement before you are able to find an end room, but instead of needing to be level 20, you need to be level 30. There aren't any variations of this room, but the stuff that generates inside of them can be random. Sometimes you get a weird banana looking thing that has chests in it, or the obsidian pillars from the ender dragon fight. Either way, it's the only place to get end materials. The final and most important room you can find in a raw vault is the farm room. 
This is the room where you'll find core materials and sky vaults. You can get stuff like bamboo, sugarcane, any crops, melons, pumpkins, coral, tall flowers, small flowers, etc. It is a really useful room. On top of all of this, there's a chance that a house can spawn in one of the sections of the room. Out of the multiple variations of houses, this one has a chance to spawn a villager or a zombie villager. It is a 50-50 chance, I believe, so you gotta pray that you are lucky when you find one of these. And I don't think you need me to tell you how good having a villager is in a skyblock setting. Alright, that is everything about inside the raw vaults. Time to talk about some things about them. Similarly to normal vaults, you do in fact get vault experience from raw vaults, so you should open as many chests as you can during the first few vault runs. Also, the completion crates that you get are the same as normal completion crates, meaning you can get vault gear very early on. When you mine one of the raw vault crystals from the budding crystal, the raw vault crystal will be the same level as your vault level, but by using a piston, you can get a level 0 vault crystal. Now, why is this important? Well, the higher the level of the crystal, the more vault XP reduction is on it. At level 0, you just have your basic crystal, but any subsequent level after adds a modifier called vault XP reduction, which removes the percentage of vault experience from a run. So at level 1, it's 25% reduction, level 2 is 50% reduction, level 3 is 75% reduction, and any crystal level 4 and above has 100% XP reduction. You shouldn't run too many level 0 raw vaults though, as you can't really get any other important items and the gear you'll get will be level 0, which is going to be less useful the more you level up. So that is all the mechanics surrounding the raw vault, let's talk about sky vaults gameplay mechanics. The nether in sky vaults works a little different than your traditional nether. The nether is an endless void, just like your platform in the overworld. After getting an elytra though, you can fly around and find generated structures such as nether fortresses and bastions that you can loot. And if you were wondering, no, there are not any generated structures in the overworld, meaning there also isn't an end dimension. In terms of mob spawning, hostile mobs can obviously spawn anywhere that there isn't light, so your basic mob farm still works. In fact, it will work even better because there isn't anywhere for the mobs to spawn except for there. Passive mobs, though, have their spawning a bit more restricted. Most passive mobs will only spawn on grass blocks in biomes that usually have grass as its main block, which means biomes like oceans will not spawn passive mobs at all. Also, they require direct skyline access or else they will not spawn. Just a little tip though, the lower down in the world you go, the more likely passive mobs will spawn. Okay, that's it. That's everything that Sky Vaults has to offer. But I feel like a lot of people, including myself, have a hard time trying to figure out how to get started. So I'm going to go over what to do when you first start your Sky Vaults world. So, starting off, you are going to want to grab a crystal and then go into the vault. You are then are going to want to grab all of the basic necessities like wood and stone and then make yourself some basic tools. I personally started off my vaults by finding a quarry room and then mining all of the ores and compacted blocks I could find. Once you feel like you got enough, you should then go out and explore the rest of the vault. You should try and grab stuff that you can grow back on the island, and not just random items like torches or scaffolding. Stuff like tree saplings and crops are a good starting place. In sky vaults, you are going to be building a lot more farms than you would in normal vault hunters because you are literally on a floating island with no immediate resources. And so by grabbing things like crops and saplings, you save yourself so much more time later on down the line. It's in your best interest to be finding the monoliths to complete the vault objective too, as that's the easiest way to get some free loot. Like I said in my previous starter guide videos, you do not need to go super fast. You should go at a pace that you are comfortable with and not worry about dying or running out of time. Then, once you do get more comfortable, you can then increase your speed a bit more. When you finished a few raw vault runs, it may be worth it to expand the island out a little bit and start laying the groundwork for stuff that you want to do. Maybe you want to build a big ass structure, or maybe you want to build a big ass greenhouse or something, I don't know. In sky vaults, you can pretty much do whatever you want. I recommend making a few simple farms. They don't need to be too big, but they should be producing a little bit of materials for you in the background. Now, it's absolutely your choice on what you want to spend your skill points on, but I have a few recommendations for your first couple skills. First off, you're obviously going to need heal, 
and then you're going to want to invest in dash and vein miner and then maybe put a second point into heal. Now if you watched my vault abilities video, you would know that I absolutely dogged on farmer. But in Sky Vault, it's actually a pretty good idea to stick one point into it early game so that you can get crops whenever you need them. Just please don't spec into Rancher. Any of the other two options are way better than Rancher. After you've gathered quite a bit of resources, maybe built a few farms, and ran a couple more raw vaults, you can then start getting into the actual Vault Hunters portion of the game, making stuff like the Vault Altar and the Bounty Table. And when you feel ready to do so, you can start crafting actual vault crystals and run normal vaults. And with that, I believe that is everything you need to know about Sky Vaults and how to get started. If you found this video helpful in any way, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thank you all for the recent support on my videos, it really means a lot to me. But anyways guys, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later. See ya.